Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Majid Al Abud, and this is uh, uh, lecture one of session 12 of the metabolism module, and I will talk about disorders of adrenal cortex. So in this module, we have a number of learning objectives that we have to cover, as you can see here. First of all, I will talk about the control of cortisol by the ACTH and the corticotrophic hormone from the pituitary gland. Then I'll explain how uh, ACTH can lead to increased pigmentation in certain areas of the body. And then I will talk about the main actions of cortisol, what are the features of over and under secretion of cortisol, and how do we diagnose this order of adrenal function. And finally, uh, explain how cortisol can have weak mineralocorticoid and androgen effects due to what is called hormone homology or receptor homology this is a very common slide that you have seen before this is the way that our body control cortisol secretion so we have here the hypothalamus which secretes the corticotrophic hormone releasing hormone this will in response to stressful situations such as infection fever trauma or any type of stress any disease the CRH will be produced from the hypothalamus it will stimulate the anterior pituitary gland to secrete adrenocorticotrophic hormone from a precursor called proomnium melanocortin and this ACTH will stimulate the adrenal cortex to produce cortisol and cortisol has a negative feedback on both ACTH and CRH so how does high level ACTH cause hyperpigmentation? What is the explanation? So as we said, there is a precursor of uh, ACTH called the proomnium melanocortin or PONC. This is a large protein that contains around 250 amino acids. And this is the biosynthetic precursor that is secreted from the uh, pituitary gland. And when there is breakdown of PONC, it will give up, will give uh, ACTH and MSH. The MSH is the melanocyte stimulating hormone. The MSH sequence of 13 amino acids is contained within the ACTH sequence in the pro omnio melanocortin or the PONC. And therefore, because of this similarity, the ACTH will have some MSH-like activity, especially when present in excess. So when there is large amount of ACTH, it will have melanocyte stimulating hormone-like activity. And as you know, melanocyte stimulating hormone stimulates melanocytes in the skin to produce melanin and melanin is responsible for the hyperpigmentation. Therefore, patients with very high level of ACTH, usually they are hyperpigmented. And this is the picture of the former president of the United States of America, John Kennedy. And John Kennedy had a distance disease, as you can see, he has hyperpigmentation, he had hyperpigmentation in the skin. And this is a, a picture of a patient with a distance disease with very high level of ACTH, as you can see here, this is his picture before he become a dysonian. And then when he developed a distance disease, uh, his uh, color skin has uh, been uh, darkened. What are the actions of glucocorticoids? As we said, glucocorticoids uh, in the previous lectures uh, are the stress hormones. We need these hormones during the time of stress. So whenever there is excess of cortisol, for any reason, it will act in the following action. First of all, it will act on the liver, as you can see here in this triangle. This is represent the liver. It will increase the gluconeogenesis inside the liver and increase enzyme synthesis. All of this will lead to increased glucose concentration in the blood. 
because we need glucose as a source of energy during stressful situation so that glucose can go to the heart to the brain to these essential organs also it will act on the adipose tissue and will cause a breakdown of lipid uh, forming fatty acid and the glycerol to act as a source of energy for the body this is an unusual situation but in high concentration of glucocorticoids it will have a lipogenetic effect so there will be lipogenesis therefore there will be fat accumulation in certain areas in the body usually in the abdomen and in the upper back also glucocorticoid will act on the muscles represented here by this oval shape and will result in a breakdown of protein to produce amino acids as a source of energy again and this breakdown of muscle will cause muscle weakness in people with glucocorticoid high level in general in endocrinology for the glands when there is disorder of the gland it is either over secretion or under secretion the same story is applied here in the adrenal gland if there is over secretion it is called Cushing syndrome and if there is under secretion it is called Edison's disease in Cushing syndrome there are three main reasons either there is excess of ACTH which is usually due to a pituitary micro or macro adenoma so there is tumor inside the pituitary gland that is secreting a large quantities of ACTH or occasionally sometimes the ACTH is secreted from a tumor outside the pituitary gland and here we call it ectopic ACTH secretion and most likely is a, a bronchogenic cancer secreting ACTH the second cause is of excess uh, steroid is due to adrenal causes and here usually there is tumor inside the adrenal gland secreting a uh, glucocorticoid and the third third cause is iatrogenic that is man-made and it is actually the most common cause of Cushing syndrome it is drug induced by using a steroid by the patient for many reasons for example in people with a chronic inflammatory condition like bronchial asthma rheumatoid arthritis systemic lupus erythematosis immunotransmission immune from positivonic purpura, nephrotic syndrome, etc. Here we need a steroid as anti-inflammatory for a long period of time on a high dose of a steroid and this will result in the atrogenic Cushing syndrome. This is the photo of uh, the American neurosurgeon uh, Harvey Cushing, the first man who described Cushing syndrome. So what is the effect or what are the effects of over secretion of cortisol first of all it will act on the muscle it will lead to proteolysis and then muscle wasting and it will act on the hepatic uh, gluconeogenesis it will enhance hepatic gluconeogenesis as a result of the, that the patient will have diabetes and this type of diabetes is a special type we call it a steroid induced diabetes or steroid diabetes and because it acts on the muscles causing the proteolysis there will be wasting of the muscles usually proximal muscles are affected so the patient will have thin arms thin legs uh, and with muscle weakness usually proximal muscle weakness excess cortisol will have an effect on the fat it will increase lipogenesis because there is high level of a steroid this will lead to characteristic body shape which is a moon shaped face with weight gain and sometimes we call it like a lemon on a match sticks because the limbs are thin because of muscle weakness and the center of the body is, is fat uh, be because of increased lipogenesis and because of a breakdown of muscle at the subcutaneous tissue there will be purple citria usually in the lower abdomen and the upper eyes 
uh, sorry, upper arms and thighs. So the skin will be thin, easy bruising, and the bleeding from below the skin. This is called, this will result in purple citrite. And I'm going to show you a photo of a purple citrite later on. Again, we are talking about the over, still talking about the over secretion of cortisol. And as you know, steroids are potent anti-inflammatory uh, agents or hormones. Therefore, in those people, because of the anti-inflammatory effects of cortisol, they have immunosuppression and they are susceptible for bacterial infections. And this is the cause of acne. Also, cortisol will affect the bone by causing a defect in mineralization and calcium deposition in the bone, which will result in osteoporosis. Also, it will affect the protein inside the bone, and all of these will result in osteoporosis. And because cortisol has a mineral corticoid activity, and we will talk about this later, it will result in hypertension. Why? Because there will be retention of fluid and sodium due to the mineral corticoid effect of cortisol. And the mineral corticoid activity, as you know, will result in renal reabsorption of sodium and the secretion of potassium. Therefore, the patient will have low level of potassium, high level of sodium, and muscle weakness because potassium is important for muscle contraction. And this is the a uh, figure shows the typical features of a patient with Cushing syndrome. So there will be hair thinning and hirsutism, acne and the plethora of the face, moon face shape, probably peptic ulcer disease, loss of height because of osteoporosis and the fracture of the vertebrae, diabetes, steroid diabetes and hyperglycemia, menstrual disturbances in females, sometimes a uh, a problem with the uh, easy bruising of the skin, poor wound healing, hypertension, cataract in the lenses of the eye, even psychosis, abdominal citria, decreased skin thickness, the skin is very thin, and wasting of the proximal muscle. On your left hand side, you can see a face of a typical patient with Cushing syndrome, plethoric face, moon shaped face. On the right hand, you can see the typical citrine, the abdomen, and the upper thigh, and the buttock. And uh, these are typical of uh, purple citrine, typical of Cushing syndrome. Now, what we talked about the uh, over secretion of cortisol and Cushing. Now, we will talk about under secretion of cortisol, which is called Addison's disease. It is characterized by extreme tiredness and muscular weakness, anorexia, vague abdominal pain, sometimes vomiting and nausea, weight loss, and occasional dizziness. Why? Because cortisol is a stress hormone, and here we are talking about a state of deficiency of cortisol. There will be also extreme muscular weakness and dehydration. Increased pigmentation due to high level of ACTH, as we explained. And there will be decrease in blood pressure because there will be low mineral corticoid activities. And therefore, there will be low sodium in the plasma and postural hypotension. The word postural means when the patient is sitting and then he stands up, he will have hypotension. Also, because of the impaired gluconeogenesis, there will be episode of hypoglycemia, especially on fasting. And a very dangerous situation, life-threatening condition is called a Addisonian crisis, which is a clinical emergency that must be treated with intravenous cortisol and the fluid to avoid death. And this Addisonian crisis requires admission to the emergency room. This is the uh, English doctor, the famous one, Thomas Edison, who discovered and described Edison's disease. On the left side, you can see the uh, hands, the palms of a patient with Edison's disease with hyperpigmentation. You can see here is the hyperpigmentation in the creases of the palm. 
and again on the right there is a picture of a lady with hyperpigmentation due to Addison's disease around the mouth and the cheek there is hyperpigmentation of the sun exposed area how do we treat Addison's disease so because there is a steroid deficiency so there are two types of treatment. First of all, when the patient presents with the life-threatening Addisonian crisis, which is a medical emergency, can lead to vascular collapse and death, we need to treat the patient with high doses of hydrocortisone in the emergency department. So we usually, we give the patient 200 milligram of hydrocortisone vial intravenously immediately. And because the patient usually have volume depletion we rehydrate him or her with saline and also because of hypoglycemia we have to correct it with glucose infusion so it is better to give the glucose and saline infusion however in the long term not in the case of Addisonian crisis in Addison's disease we have to replace the hormone that is deficient which is cortisol in the form of hydrocortisone tablet 10 to 30 milligram a day and also we have to give mineral corticoid in the form of glodrocortisone tablet daily. How do we confirm the diagnosis of adrenocortical dysfunction? What are the adrenocortical function tests? We have many of them. The easiest one is the early morning plasma cortisol. Because if you remember when we talked in the previous lecture on the control of cortisol, we said that the maximum secretion of cortisol in the early morning that is why when we check for cortisol we have to check it in the early morning while the patient is fasting also it is important to measure ACTH to differentiate between a uh, Cushing syndrome and Cushing's disease a 24-hour urinary cortisol is important as well we measure the level of cortisol in the urine over 24-hour sample and we have dynamic tests, as you know, in endocrinology. So for cases that are suspected to have Cushing syndrome, we do what is called dexamethasone suppression test. We give the patient dexamethasone tablet, which is a potent steroid. If there is the uh, suppression of ACTH secretion and cortisol secretion, then the patient does not have Cushing's disease or syndrome. But if we give dexamethasone and the cortisol is still high and there is suppression of cortisol by uh, less than 50%, this is Cushing's disease. Because in Cushing's disease, uh, this is ectopic actual ACTA secretion. Because in ectopic ACTA secretion, there is loss of response of ACTH to suppression by dexamethasone. Unlike in people with Cushing's disease due to ACTH the tumor in the pituitary gland. So if there is adenoma in the pituitary gland secreting ACTH, here the adenoma usually still have the potential to be suppressed, I mean the ACTH, by dexamethasone. And this will differentiate between ectopic and ACTH secretion from the pituitary gland. While in cases of suspected Addison's disease that is under function of the, of the uh, adrenal gland, we do ACTH stimulation test and we call it synaxin test. Here we give the patient ampoule of synaxin, which is ACTH synthetic, 250 microgram intramuscularly, and we measure cortisol before the injection and 30 and 60 minutes after the in injection. If there is increase in the level of cortisol more than 400 nanomol per liter after injecting the patient with ACTH, this is normal. But if there is failure to response, which is reflected by an uh, increase in the level of cortisol by less than 400 nanomol per liter, then this is diagnostic of Addison's disease. Finally, I will talk about uh, the steroid hormone receptor homology. How cortisol have or glucocorticoids have a mineral corticoid activity and 
uh, testosterone or uh, sex hormone like activity because in the steroid receptors there are three main regions the first one is a hydrophobic region which is specific for hormone binding we call it hormone binding region the second one is a DNA binding region this region is responsible for the uh, attachment of steroid hormone receptor to the DNA and the third one is a variable region that is different from one hormone to another so there is a homology similarity in the hormone binding region of the receptors of a steroid without of mineralocorticoid and with that of androgen so all of the three hormones mineralocorticoid androgen and a steroid have homology in the hormone binding regions around 64 percent homology or similarity to lesser extent also there is homology between estrogen and thyroid receptors with the steroid hormone receptors therefore cortisol in high level will bind to the same receptors of the mineralocorticoid and androgen because of this homology and this will result in picture similar to high mineralocorticoid activity and high androgen which is hypertension uh, increased sodium in the plasma hypernatremia decreased potassium in the plasma hypokalemia uh, dehydration fluid loss in addition to a androgen like activity such as sorry not dehydration fluid loss uh, there will be fluid retention I'm sorry uh, and the androgen like activity the patient will have hirsutism acne and uh, the other secondary sec uh, features sexual characteristics of the male so this is explained by the steroid hormone receptor homology and thank you for listening